Amen. Today, my beloved, we are celebrating the Golden Friday. And the, we are still in the fasting of the disciples, the apostles. As we are in this occasion, I would like to speak about the disciples' transformation after the resurrection itself and the Pentecost that happened last week. My beloved, today let us reflect the remarkable transformation of Jesus' disciples before and after his resurrection. Uh, the book of Hebrews tells us that consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. And while we often look at the end of their lives, it's also important to consider um, their beginnings because it's truly appreciated that the power of God, uh, how he changed them, those who surrendered to him and gave their life to, them, to him and repented. Now, before resurrection, the disciples, like us, they are deep humans. And they experience a, way, a wide range of uh, emotions and flaws. They followed our Christ, our God, witnessed his miracles, and heard his teachings. Yet often they struggled with understanding and modeling his message. First thing that I would like to speak about the 12 disciples that were, they were with Jesus, that they have fear before resurrection and doubt. The disciples, when Jesus were arrested, was arrested, the disciples were filled of fear and uncertainty. They abandoned him. They left him. Only John didn't. They were fearing on their own lives. Peter, who had sworn that never to die Jesus, did so three times out of fear. Thomas, after the resurrection, because he didn't see the resurrected Christ, he also didn't believe the disciples that they saw him. That fear was on the same people they were after the resurrection preaching. Look now that they have hot tempered. Imagine some Peter after the resurrection, that saint that always enthusiastic driven by his emotions. For example, he jumped out in the early morning from the boat in the cold water just to, uh, uh, to reach our Lord Jesus. While they were in the boat, they just can go to the shore instead of going uh, uh, by his emotions. Another example of his impulsiveness is when he cut off the ear of the high priest servant during our Lord Jesus' arrest. Look at John, one of the other disciples. He was quick to anger, and they were called him and his brother, son of thunder. This temperament was evident that when he asked Jesus that they called down a fire on the city, one of the cities, the villages of Samaritan. And the Lord rebuked them. The disciples, they had pride and self-interest. John and James wanted to sit on the right and left of the Lord while they were thinking that he would establish a political kingdom. Even during the Last Supper, all the disciples were distracted with who among them was the greatest. They were fighting between them who was the greatest. The disciples before resurrection, they were all confused. They have confusion. They didn't understand our Lord's teachings. Even they were hearing him three years. They couldn't understand him. They asked Jesus why they couldn't cast out demons. Even that happened before with them. They were also confused why the Lord must 
sacrifice himself and die for them. They didn't accept that. They were filled after that with sadness. They, look what the Lord says to them. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Their hearts were filled with sorrowful. You will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. Before his resurrection, the disciples were overwhelmed with sorrow, as seen when Jesus found them sleeping from sorrow. They slept from sadness. And they didn't accept that Jesus, whom was doing miracles, all multitudes coming after him, he will be alone in garden, praying alone, that just the 12, maybe also closer, the three of them, just protecting them. They were thinking, but they were sleeping also. They couldn't understand anything. Now, there's, here happens the mark, that profound turning point for the disciples, which is the resurrection. And after that, if you see, the whole Bible was written after the resurrection. And many places that says that now they are understanding what he was telling them before. They couldn't catch it. Now after they start understanding, that transformed their fear to courage, their doubt to faith, and their misunderstanding to clarity. Now, what happens from those apostles that were full of fear, sadness, confusion, self-interest, and whole tempered and doubt? They start being bold and courage. And um, St. Peter, when he stood in the Pentecost, he brought to, her, to Jesus 3,000 men without the women and the children. Now, even, they look what it says in Acts, even though when standing in front of the leaders of Jewish, the, on, the, on, on, on the front of the Sanhedrin, they, couldn't, they, they weren't sad, they were scared. Look what it says, they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. All the disciples were murdered unless except John. That tells us how much courage they had. The second thing that changed in their life and their personality, love and compassion. And the disciples' heart transformed from anger to love. Jesus reinstates Peter, asking him to take care of the sheep where he denied him three times weeks ahead. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Do you know who said that? John. John who asked the, the, the Lord to bring down fire on the village in Samaritan. Now, those start to, have, to serve, and they were in unity. Look after the resurrection, they start clearly understand their mission, that the Lord came, he died, he resurrected, but he promised them to send a helper, which is the Holy Spirit, and he will teach them and remind them for everything that he told them. You could tell that from the book of Acts, where the people around Christians, they start seeing the love between them, how they share everything, how they take care of their flock, and then they serve each other. Now, you will ask me, Abuna, how does this apply to me? I will tell you, maybe we, because we were baptized young as children, we are experiencing Christianity different than the disciples where they mature understanding everything. But even, look, when the people they tell you, when you grow, you can baptize and understand. Even the mature apostles, they couldn't understand many things, most of what Jesus taught them. Even there was miracles 
even the, all the teachings he was giving in the mountain and everywhere, all the miracles that no one could do. They couldn't understand. Transformation, it's about changing. There is a moment we can change, but that moment doesn't come from nowhere. It's about elevating. It's about growing. We are different than the apostles. Apostles, their mind helped them when the Holy Spirit descended on them, helped them to understand what, what Jesus is teaching them. For us, we were baptized as children. What can help us later on in our life is repentance. When we repent, we experience the moment of transformation that we received in the baptism, that the disciples, they received it in the Pentecost. When we are cleansed through confession to repentance, that will make us a clear ground that when the Holy Spirit comes, He can pass by, give blessings, and dwell in us. And then you and you and me will be a blessing. And then we will transform. It's important, my beloved, to understand and to dig and search. But remember, without being repentant and being close to the Holy Spirit, be united in the Eucharist and with the Lord, we can't understand transformation. Transformation doesn't happen that come the Holy Spirit descend on you and you start screaming and shouting and, and, and praising. doesn't happen like this. It needs a time. The Lord needs to dig our ground. He needs to take all the bad stuff from there, all the struggles, all temptations, all lust, all thoughts, and then he will need to pour on us the Holy Spirit. For that, my beloved, today, as the disciples, their life changed, even with all the emotions, the flaws they experienced. Today, the Lord is calling us back to repent, not on only a sin we committed, also on things that takes our mind away. Examine yourself when you enter the church today. You were concentrating or your thoughts were taking you other places. Is your heart were here totally with Christ? Or you needed like one hour, to, like maybe till now you didn't concentrate. Examine yourself. If not, ask the Lord. Please, Lord, cleanse, clean my ground. Make it in you. Give me a heart that helps me understand your teachings, love you. Please, Lord, by the communion and the prayers in this liturgy, help me cleanse me from the, any authority from the evil one or the world or myself. And give me to be a, a vessel that you could use and please you in its life. I ask the Lord to give you, my beloved, a remarkable life full of um, uh, uh, holiness, love, courage, and unity. And may the Lord uses you and transfer to your life and glory to be to him now and forever and ever. Amen.